When the incident at Chernobyl happened, it opened up a plethora of weird activities in that region, and it was really a sad one. Even today, lots of strange things are still being discovered, and here are some of the 15 most shocking things ever found in Chernobyl. Room full of gas masks 33 years after the disaster, this haunting room full of gas masks was found. The most disturbing aspect of this gas mask room is that it wasn't found in an army base or bomb shelter, but in a school in Pripyat, the town where the nuclear plant was located. It's unclear as to why they're scattered all over the floor. When the town was evacuated, maybe there was a desperate scramble to get as many masks as possible. Another theory is that the site is often looted and people wanted to bring back a Chernobyl gas mask as a souvenir. The gas masks were in the school in case of a nuclear war. The Soviet Union was terrified of being attacked by the US. In the end, the destroyer of this town was themselves. Photos were taken by Dutch photographer Erwin Zwan, who visited the site in 2016 and 2018. Speaking about this trip, he told Fox News, It's surreal, impressive, sad, but also beautiful. You're roaming around in an area where chapters ended and at the same time, new chapters started. And as we get into this list further, there are surprising rays of hope within this bleak part of the world. Fasten your seatbelts because it's time for today's sweet topic. What they discovered in Chernobyl terrifies the whole world. And still today, sanctions are still being delivered due to what happened. In fact, lots of movies have been made to show the world what really happened in the industrial city of Chernobyl. From stillbirths to weird deformities, the people from that place have had their fair share of weirdness. Just as we see in this picture, a creature that looks like a fetus is placed in an examination table and it's still hard to discern what it is. Could this have been delivered by one of the survivors of Chernobyl? Were those defects passed down through generations? We can't say, but these are the questions we have to ask. So what do you think? Kindly share your thoughts in the comment section using hashtag sweet topic. Azure Swimming Pool Our next stop on our trip through Chernobyl is the Azure Swimming Pool. There was a promising swimming team in Pripyat before the explosion, and this was the best swimming pool in town. But the strangest thing about it is that it wasn't closed up until 1998, 12 years after the incident and 8 years after the fall of the Soviet Union. Prior to 1986, this was a swimming pool for the workers at the Chernobyl nuclear plant. Following the explosion and the resulting cleanup years later, the pool became a leisure spot for the workers who were clearing up radiation from the exclusion zone. But once the cleanup was done and the liquidators finally left, the swimming pool was closed. So for 25 years now, this pool has been empty. Although it was still used a decade after the disaster, the clock stopped on the exact date of when everything happened in 1986. The workers later on clearly felt that the clock should stay like that as a reminder of that fatal day. On the walls of the now empty swimming pool, is the word rain as a reminder that water was once there. Zalissi Village Zalissi Village is 30 kilometers from the exclusion zone, but even still, this region has been evacuated since 86. Its 3,200 residents were slow to leave the area as they simply had no idea what was happening at the nuclear power plant. The village had houses, a supermarket, a school, and what was known as the Palace of Culture. This was a community center that also had a library, a concert hall, and was generally the center of the community. Once the disaster happened, the Palace of Culture turned into a barracks to house the many soldiers working in the exclusion zone. On the stage of the concert hall read the sign, Communism is a bright future for all humanity. This message must have been looked pretty bleak from the soldiers trying to minimize a nuclear disaster. A nearby forest has grown into the village too with many abandoned houses surrounded by vegetation and sometimes destroyed by fallen trees. But there's no place like home, and villagers who departed in 86 decided to come back in recent years. 139 people illegally settled back, and because they were fairly old by then, they felt that Mother Nature would end their lives before the radiation. Whether they've continued living here during the war in Ukraine is unknown. Sadly for those people, asking for a quiet life is sometimes too much to ask for. Kopecha Nursery Kopecha Nursery is a grim reminder of the children who lived through this event, and this nursery is one of the only buildings left in the village of Kopecha. A lot of the houses in this area were torn down afterwards. 
The nursery is like any other you would find across the world. There are drawings by the kids hung up on the walls, toys and dolls scattered around the floor, and beds where the kids could have nap time. The toy dolls now look creepier than ever, having lived through a nuclear disaster. These were the dolls that children suddenly had to stop playing with and run for their lives. By burying the buildings, the soldiers thought that they were doing the right thing by getting rid of the radioactive material. But instead, they only made the radiation seep further into the ground. Ironically, they've made things worse. So all of the houses that were once there are now mounds of dirt, and on this dirt is a signpost signaling radiation. Football Stadium Ukrainians are known for their love of soccer, and the town of Pripyat was no exception. Stradle Pripyat FC had a promising history and was destined to go on to bigger and better things. The Soviet Union was scheduled to unveil a brand new stadium on May 1st, which was Soviet Workers' Day. Today, it stands as one of the few football stadiums where not a single ball has ever been kicked. Most of the players were simply local villagers. Stroidel simply means builder, so the football team loosely meant builders of Pripyat. But this new stadium was built because their old stadium could not simply contain its crowds every week and needed something with a bigger capacity. They even had a semi-final cup game set to take place when the disaster happened. And for soccer fans watching, you might be interested to know that Ukraine's greatest ever footballer, Andriy Shevchenko, had to evacuate from Kyiv during the Chernobyl disaster as well. He was 200 kilometers away and temporarily relocated to the Sea of Azov, which was 1,500 kilometers from home. So what happened to the old team? A lot of them moved nearby to a town called Slavodich. So the team was renamed, but that team was disbanded after a year. As you can imagine, they felt there was no point in pretending that things could ever be the same again. Radioactive Fox Foxes like to wander around urban areas at night, so an abandoned city like Pripyat would seem like a fox's dream. Unaware of the dangers of the radiation around the area, this fox lives near the Chernobyl exclusion zone and this fox displays some strange behavior. If you see a fox on the street, they'll probably avoid you because of its inbuilt suspicion and fear of humans. But this fox is actually quite friendly, and humans are an important source of food, so the guards might give them some scraps. In the video, the fox amazingly makes himself a bacon sandwich. He's given loaves of bread and some bacon. The fox puts all of these items in his mouth and then orders them in such a way that he has the bacon in between the slices of bread. But the rather sad aspect of this story is that food is in such short supply here that the fox may have had to overcome his fear of humans to get it. Either way, it's very kind of the guards to help this little fellow out like this. Abandoned Church The existence of a nuclear disaster like Chernobyl might be enough to destroy someone's faith in God, but this abandoned church demonstrates the glimmers of hope that emerge in this site. The Soviet Union's ultimate goal was for its citizens to worship the state rather than any religion. But outside Pripyat in the village of Krasny, a church still stands in pristine condition. And seeing a place of worship in the aftermath of a nuclear disaster looks incredibly strange and surreal. From the outside, it looks like a lot of the worn and derelict buildings in the area. However, on the inside, things are a bit different. You could be mistaken that you were no longer in the Chernobyl exclusion zone. It's in remarkably pristine condition. The murals, crosses, and even letters from that time have still remained throughout these decades. For a lot of Christians nearby, the fact that this house of God has been perfectly preserved is no coincidence, and it's probably been a sign of respect that no looters seem to have raided this place as well. German Chernobyl explorer Andre Friesen was brave enough to visit this place in 2016 and remarked, it was amazing to see a holy house in such a decaying zone, in a condition like this. The atmosphere in there was incredible after seeing all the rundown houses in the city. It's a drastic contrast to most buildings in the exclusion zone, which is not prohibited to be lived in by humans. It's claimed that priests sometimes secretly visit this church to hold rituals. They believe that its ability to survive unscathed is miraculous. Friesen even found a letter urging present visitors to take good care of the church. Amusement Park One of the most tragic sights of Chernobyl is its abandoned amusement park. What should be the site of joy and fun is now consumed with an eerie silence. The Ferris wheel, bumper cars, and roller coaster are covered in rust and rotting away. And like the football stadium, this whole amusement park was never used. It was meant to be opened on Workers' Day on May 1st, but the workers and their children had spent their April getting as far away as possible from this place. 
and during the disaster, helicopters used it as a landing ground as they knew nobody would be inside. The helicopters would take away radioactive soil and wash it into the ground of this park. Photojournalist and tourist guide Anton Petrus told The Sun, When I first visited five years ago, the first thing I thought was, this looks like our planet after humanity disappears. Everywhere I looked, there were overgrown trees and cracked concrete. It was completely abandoned. It was a very strange spectacle. Pripyat is the worst place I've ever been, but it's a very unique place for photographers. So far from being the scene of a communist utopia, this fun fair is now famous for its dystopian feel. Any gamers might recognize this park from Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, and it's also mentioned in the TV show Scorpion Wasteland. UNESCO is a faction of the UN that seeks to preserve the most significant historical places on the earth. So, places like the Taj Mahal, the Great Wall of China, and Yellowstone National Park are all UNESCO heritage sites. But with Chernobyl, the actual wasteland of Chernobyl is being eyed up as a UNESCO heritage site. So ironically, the historical importance of this site means that Ukraine wants to keep this abandoned site exactly as it is. And if it becomes a UNESCO heritage, this will give this site a level of protection from people building over it. The Ukrainian culture minister told Reuters, We believe that putting Chernobyl on the UNESCO heritage list is a first and important step towards having this great place as a unique destination of interest for the whole of mankind. The importance of the Chernobyl zone lays far beyond Ukraine's borders. It's not only about commemoration, but also history and people's rights. It's also important that we don't just celebrate the beautiful historical sites like the Great Wall of China and the Taj Mahal, but also the darker places that provide us with lessons from the past. Auschwitz Birkenau is also a UNESCO heritage site, so it makes sense that another incredibly bleak but significant site like Chernobyl is also recognized. Jupiter Factory If you lived in Pripyat, you would most likely work at the Chernobyl nuclear plant and the second most likely place to get a job at Jupiter Factory. Officially, this factory made tape recorders, but it's alleged that not one single recorder was made in this factory. Instead, it was a secret weapons factory. When people finally got to visit this factory, it was more likely that they made military equipment and black boxes. They made equipment for soldiers fighting on the battlefield, devices for underwater submarines, and even equipment for space travel. We often forgot that it was the Soviet Union that was the first country to send a person into space. The factory appears on the video game Stalker, Call of Pripyat, and in the music video of the song Marooned by Pink Floyd. But in the basement inside this factory is something a lot more sinister, something which we'll save for later in this list. Claw of Death If you walked around the site today and were wondering what would be the most dangerous thing to touch, the answer to that question would be the Claw of Death. This item sits alone in the forest outside of Pripyat. In the initial cleanup, the claw was part of a crane that was used to dig up radioactive waste. All of the most dangerous materials during the cleanup were touched by this thing. Cleanup workers were unsure of what to do with it, so they simply dumped it out into the woods in the hopes that nobody would ever be able to find it. Most of the tours which happened around Chernobyl never went near this claw, but sometimes people wandered off on their own in search of it. It's hard to explain just how dangerous this item truly is. Archaeologist Robert Maxwell, who has worked on the site, told the journalist Libby Jane Charleston, Imagine someone trying to stand on a rooftop that was so radioactive that it could give you such acute radiation sickness that you basically cook yourself and die. So, this claw was deeply involved in all of the intensely radioactive material as it moved the material back into the core. To say the claw is highly radioactive and dangerous is not an exaggeration. Russian Woodpecker From 1976 up until the explosion, a peculiar tapping sound was heard all across the world. Both amateur and commercial radio operators could hear it. Before the fall of the Soviet Union, no one was aware of the origins of this odd sound, but they soon realized that it was this radar device at Chernobyl known as the Duga radar or the Russian Woodpecker. The Soviet Union and the United States frequently threatened to go to war in the 1980s. Both sides would regularly threaten each other, and the possibility of a nuclear war between these superpowers was very realistic. This radar made a woodpecker sound that could detect anything coming from the west. Its length was 700 meters, and its height was 150 meters. The USSR constructed two of them, one in Chernobyl called Duga-1 and the other in eastern Siberia called, you guessed it, Duga-2. The USA was the target of Duga-1, 
while China and Japan were the targets of Duga 2. They would have two or three minutes to get ready and flee if this antenna could identify missiles 1,600 kilometers away. The transmitter sound was so loud that it could be heard from all over the globe and even interfered with maritime and aviation radar systems. In true Soviet style, the Russians just denied it existed when other nations complained. According to CNN, thieves may have transferred crucial parts to Moscow or taken them away. Additionally, any documentation pertaining to this top secret item would be located in Moscow rather than Ukraine. So there's a lot of aspects of this top secret machine that we'll never know about. Because the locals were not even informed of what it was, many rumors or conspiracies circulated. Some believed they were used to manipulate the weather, while some believed it to be mind control technology. But even the real purpose behind this machine is startling enough as it is. Cooling Pond Catfish There are numerous myths and misconceptions regarding Chernobyl as a result of the area being mainly locked off from the rest of the world. The catastrophe at Chernobyl undoubtedly had some impact on the animals living there. But occasionally, people assume that radiation is the cause of anything odd at the location. Superhero movies have allowed people's imaginations to run away with themselves. Jeremy Wade, a TV fisherman, presented an episode for Animal Planet's River Monsters in Chernobyl. In this episode, he caught a rather strangely shaped catfish, and its strange and mutated look was linked to the radiation in the area and possibly in the water. However, this turned out to be just a weird-looking catfish, and although a mutated fish from Chernobyl made a great TV topic, it was far from the truth. The documentary maker Robert Stone responded to this footage with, Never let facts get in the way of a good story, particularly when there are ratings to be had. But the reason why this catfish is so big is rather startling. It wasn't the radiation or the water, it was simply the absence of humans interfering with the water. The rivers around Chernobyl ironically have more fish than waters in safer places. Because of the risks associated with eating Chernobyl fish, very little fishing occurs in this area. And this is why the catfish was so huge. It was allowed to live a full life and grow to a full size. Control Room Reactor The control room reactor was where it all began. On this fateful day, a safety test was done and was so minimal that the director didn't even think he needed to be there. But less experienced professionals were on the job and they did not receive proper instructions. The number four RBMK reactor exploded and caused a fire that destroyed the reactor and released deadly amounts of radiation into the sky. This is the very room where it all unfolded. Never had the words, if these walls could talk, been more relevant. In recent years, tourists have even been allowed to visit this room. However, it's still radioactive, so tourists were only allowed to stay there for five minutes. The radiation in this room is 40,000 times higher than normal levels. So while walking around, you'll need to be wearing a protective suit and mask. And afterwards, you're expected to do a radiation test to make sure you're still okay. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky declared it as a national tourist spot in 2019, but people had been conducting tours of this site for many years beforehand. The country received a massive spike in tourism due to the HBO series Chernobyl. Before the war in Ukraine, people were coming from all over the world to visit this site. The TV series was said to have increased visits by 30%. Secret Laboratory Our next topic takes us back to Jupiter Factory. On the outside, it was a tape recorder factory, but on the inside, it was used to build weapons and machinery. But down in the basement of this factory, something even more sinister might have taken place. In the basement of this factory is a secret lab full of chemicals. It's assumed that its location next to the nuclear plant means that it would be relatively easy to transport nuclear fuel to this secret lab and test out new weapons. So there's a chance that beneath this factory was the kitchen where they were concocting new bombs to wreak havoc on any of their enemies. As we mentioned before with the woodpecker, the Soviet Union was at war with the USA and both sides were eager to create the most deadly and powerful weapons that they could. None of them would back down and it was all about showing off who had the best weapons. In this lab, they could have cooked up something truly devastating. However, the website Forgotten Chernobyl seems to disagree with this theory. It may have been the ideal location to build nuclear weapons, but the contamination risks it brought to its citizens may have been too deadly. At the same time, there was very little security in this building. They believed that the Soviet Union would have been a bit more careful. The basement and elephant's foot. We now move on to something known as the elephant's foot. When Reactor 4 exploded, a lava-like mass called Corium was released. 
This solidified mass of radioactive material was so huge that it resembled an elephant's foot. At the beginning, the radiation from this could kill a human in a matter of seconds. The foot releases 10,000 rontins per hour, so an hour of exposure to this foot is like having 4.5 million chest x-rays. According to the AllThat'sInteresting.com, 30 seconds of exposure would have caused dizziness and fatigue, 2 minutes would cause the cells in one's body to hemorrhage, and 5 minutes or more would result in death in just 48 hours. Workers have suffered cataracts and other illnesses while trying to study it. We'll mention the brave rescue workers later on in this video, but the people who got up close to steady radiation and make sure this never happens again also deserve credit. Only a small percentage of this foot is nuclear fuel. The rest is uranium, sand, and melted concrete. It's called corium because it came from the core of the reactor. Months after the disaster, this foot was apparently still searing hot. Wild Horses At the beginning, we mentioned that there had been some glimmers of hope in this abandoned wasteland. While the explosion caused decades of devastation, there's been slight smidgens of silver lining. It has, rather bizarrely, turned into a wildlife sanctuary. Ironically, Chernobyl has become a bit of a nature reserve. A startling fact about this place is despite the amount of radiation, a certain breed of horse is simply thriving. The Prowalski's horse were becoming endangered, but thanks to the exclusion zone in Chernobyl, they continue to grow in numbers. These horses sometimes even travel through the Red Forest, which is one of the most radioactive places on Earth. And there's an important lesson to learn from this. The reason that they're thriving is that humans are absent. It's a sad reminder of just how harmful human life can be to other life forms on this planet. For these horses, poisonous radiation is preferable to humans. One biodiversity researcher at the University of Oviedo wrote, The case of these horses reflects that in the absence of humans, the large Chernobyl area has become a refuge for wildlife. This should lead us to reflect on the impact of human presence on natural ecosystems. Abandoned Hospital Another aspect of Chernobyl that should help restore your faith in humanity is the many rescue workers who risk their lives to help others. On that fateful night, many of the injured firefighters were treated in Pripyat Hospital. 237 suffered from acute radiation sickness, and 28 died. Most of these victims were firefighters and rescue workers, all of which gave their lives so that the fatality numbers were kept much, much lower. One of the rescue workers on the scene was a military officer, Vladimir Klitschko, the father of boxing Klitschko brothers. He died of cancer in 2011 and is believed that this cancer was connected to his exposure to radiation at this time. But this hospital proved incapable of dealing with the severity of what was happening. Many patients were transported to a hospital in Moscow which was the only hospital in the Soviet Union that could treat radioactive poisoning. Its current radioactive state means that the building is anything but a hospital these days. Chernobyl Dog One of the most heartbreaking aspects about Chernobyl was that the dogs of Pripyat had to be left behind. One of life's greatest pleasures is when a puppy is jumping all over you, but the dogs of Chernobyl potentially carried radiation. In some cases, soldiers were left with no choice but to shoot dogs. But, believe it or not, there are dogs which still survived, and today, these dogs on the site are presumably the pups or grand pups of the dogs which were around during the disaster. Some of them are also believed to have been stray dogs who have wandered to the zone. And the guards who work at this plant have developed a bit of a soft spot for them. A researcher named Jonathan Turnbull told the BBC, The guards sometimes go to the trouble of helping the dogs by pulling out ticks embedded in their skin or by giving them rabies injections. But life is not easy for these dogs. The harsh Ukrainian winters are tough, and because of the radiation, not many of them live beyond six years of age. Some of the guards have built little huts for them as shelter, and they often wander over to the cafe, where they're sometimes given scraps of food. The Clean Futures Fund has also set up veterinary clinics in the area. Tourists are advised that, however tempting, you should not pet these dogs. You can show them your love by giving them food. Chernobyl Car Graveyard During the cleanup, workers realized that the very tools they used for this were now also radioactive and needed to be cleaned up too. Often, the buses, cars, helicopters, and other vehicles used were simply buried underground. This is Chernobyl's Car Graveyard. While a lot of the vehicles were buried underground, this eventually became too costly, and a lot of the vehicles were just dumped here instead. The vehicles were washed during the cleanup, but the dirty tracks were not, and this is apparently where the danger lies, and most of the radiation comes from here. 
The military tanks were incredibly useful during this disaster and traveled up as far as the power plant and cleaned a lot of the debris after the explosion. These tanks were used to create the power plant's sarcophagus. You may know of this word for tombs in ancient Egypt, but in Chernobyl this refers to a protective tomb-like wall they covered over the power plant to limit the spread of radiation. Tanks were the only vehicle developed by the USSR that could work in the environment of a nuclear disaster. Were these tanks not able to drive up through the affected areas, who knows what the disaster might have become?